Hi, great us back again to our channel. And in today's info session, we proudly present the University of Nottingham Ningpo, China, and what we call it UNNC. In today's info session with UNNC, we will be focusing on the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. And it is an honor to having with us this morning. Please welcome Dr. Stuart McDonald as the Associate Professor in Economics of the School of Economics UNNC, and also Mr. Patrick Ma as the Regional Manager of International Students Recruitment UNNC. Hi, guys. Morning. Hello, everyone. Morning, morning Patrick. Morning, morning, uh, morning. morning Stuart. Good. Yeah. Uh, doctor, you can start the presentation, please. Hi. Uh, so, I'm an economist, basically, and I'm also the Director of Marketing for the Faculty of Humanities and Social Scientists. Um, about the faculty, and you, you probably wouldn't expect to find economics in a social science school, but it is a social science, and so economics in Nottingham has a presence in two, two areas, the business school and in the, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. And so I'm one of the economists that work in the School of Economics, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. And I'm also, because I'm the marketing director, I can speak about it, all of the programs to a great deal of de with a great deal of detail. A bit about us. Basically, the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences consists of uh, four schools and one centre. Now, the schools are economics, education, English, international studies, and international communications. As well as this, we have a center, which is the language center. Language center teaches um, different foreign languages. It also teaches Chinese. Um, but to the Chinese, it's for obviously the Chinese students. It's for, for foreigners like me and you or anybody who wants to basically study Chinese in, in our university. As well as that, and a very unique feature of our university is that we actually have a Confucius Institute at the university as well. The Confucius Institutes are kind of China's soft arm of diplomacy around the world. They, they, um, they put on lots of things for cult about Chinese culture, but what makes us a unique entity in China is normally the Confucius Institute doesn't appear in China at all. It's in other countries around the world. So essentially what it is is UNNC is pretty much like a foreign university within China. They call them Sino-Foreign Universities. All of our teaching is done in English, with the exception of Chinese language courses, of course. Uh, there's four years of instruction in English. Um, people who have a certain level of English above that, like uh, foreign speakers, uh, like people from your own country who, who are very good at English, don't do the foundation year, but all the Chinese uh, students who come to the university certainly do do this one big year in English and it brings everybody up to the same standard. And then they go on and do their respective courses after they do a foundation year. Uh, we have a very diverse student body. We have 2,700 students in total, um, many from different countries and regions around the world. In addition to this, we have um, a very diverse number of staff from different regions as well. Um, the basic breakdown of the staff in terms of the professors versus associate professors and assistant professors looks like the the sort of pie chart, the sort of pie chart on the on the left hand side of your view. What this says is that most of our faculty are quite young. Uh, they're from all over the place. I'm Australian, uh, but they're many people from the United Kingdom, many people from the United States working here as well. Uh, the language uh, teachers in the language center come from all of the, the respective countries that, that they teach in. So it's a, it's a highly diverse teaching faculty, a very international teaching faculty. So in total, we have 105 academic staff. And if we go back onto the previous page, you can get the breakdown of where we are sitting with respect to undergraduate, postgraduate students and PhD students as well. In terms of the research areas, economics specializes in applied economics, behavioral economics, data mining, experimental economics, health economics, tourism, and urban economics. Where um, Shanghai ranked, we're one of the top 100 departments in, in China at the moment which is quite a prestigious thing for such a small university as us. We, um, that represents that we are probably one of the top research departments. Quite rightly, we regard ourselves as, as equivalent to many 221 universities. Oh, sorry, yeah, to 
in, in China. Um, education in English, it specializes in two things. In undergraduate, it specializes in linguistics and English language. But um, when it goes into postgraduate, there are courses in education and TESOL learning. Education in English is very, um, the standards to get in there are quite difficult in terms that you have to basically um, have, a, have a higher than a, a average IELTS uh, to get into their programs. Uh, they're, they're quite strict on this. International communications uh, is sort of a hub for creative industries. Um, lots of things are developing in that school. And it's recognized as being one of the top teaching schools in this area in China. It's probably ranked in the top three in China in this area in terms of its research. Um, it, it's highly represented in terms of media and culture studies. It's setting up its own um, film studio at the moment. Uh, it's uh, big on virtual reality. It has one of the leaders in, in virtual reality in China and probably in the rest of the world. International studies is a highly diverse department. It specializes in history and in politics and also in international relations. Um, what's unique about international communications and international studies is um, people who are doing these modules have the option of picking up a foreign language along with um, when they're studying. So for example, if you were Chinese coming here, you would graduate with a pretty good level of English. But in addition to that, you could study French or you could study um, German or Japanese. So you would end up here, end up finishing your studies at UNNC with, with three languages. And if you were Indonesian coming over here, you'd end up with a competency in Chinese, but you could also pick up another foreign language if you wanted to. Um, the, all the staff are research active. It's a te full teaching and research university. Um, some of this is a represented representative sample of some of recent some of our recent publications. Maybe you're not not everybody is interested in that from the perspective that they might be undergraduates, but certainly people coming into the program who are postgraduate or are doing postgraduate research do want to know that we're actually at the front of research in our respective fields, and we certainly are. Um, in terms of satisfaction, we've got an excellent student to teacher ratio. As I said, all the teaching is done is in, in English. We have a very high average exchange rate. What this means is that typically speaking, everybody who comes into the program in the third year of the program for one semester, uh, students whose marks are at a high enough level, they can go overseas on exchange. And in a minute, I'll go through the exchange programs and explain a bit about that. Um, close to 90% of IC students and 85% of IS students go on exchange each year. Um, as far as I, I know, we are still rate, ranked very highly in terms of student satisfaction. Many people ask me what the difference between our program and a Chinese university program is. Our program, because it's taught in English, gives uh, students who are finishing here a unique advantage. The way we do teaching is in line with foreign universities. So if you were going to the United Kingdom, you could easily cope with the teaching in a master's program. Um, most of our students were a feeder and a prep school in a sense for, for um, studies in the UK and in the US. So some of my students, my best four students from last year, they went to LSE, UCL. One got a, full, a scholarship to go to Oxford. Um, that guy who got a scholarship to go to Oxford was also accepted into a master's program at Chicago. So that, that's just me and that's representative of many of the, many of my fellow colleagues. They have similar experiences with their students. In terms of exchange, as I mentioned before, in our third year, students have the option of going overseas for a semester. And these are the universities that they can exchange to. Often students ask at this point whether they can go to other universities that are not on the list. The answer is no, because these programs, we have an agreement, a memorandum of understanding. And so if you're coming to us, you can go to them and we take some students back in return from, the, from those universities. Um, my own students, they've gone to, um, out of this list of things, many of our students go to Nottingham, but I've sent students to Edinburgh, Glasgow. I've sent them to University of, University College Dublin, uh, Trinity College in Dublin. Um, one of my best students from this year went to um, Bocconi University in Italy. Uh, there, of course, we send all. The, we have the option of sending students to Australia as well, New Zealand. Um, they go for a semester. Uh, for some universities where they teach on the trimester, they may go all year. Uh, and then when they come back, they from their experience overseas, 
many of them decide they want to go back and study their masters in say australia or new zealand or united kingdom i think the exchange program i used to be a director of exchange i think the exchange program is probably one of the the best things about this university and one thing that sets us apart all the students or nearly all of our students in our faculty you're talking about up to 85 percent of our students end up going overseas at some stage during their, their studies and i think that's a strong thing about our program we have um, public lecture series. Um, these are public lectures that have been done with leading researchers from around the world. Um, currently, a lot of them get done on Zoom, but as the, the wall starts going down and people are starting to travel around in China again, we, we have these public lecture series that go on. I've participated in some of them as well. Um, their student uh, interaction is encouraged. Students come along and they participate in the audience. They ask questions. Um, it is a very, um, the students are very active and that kind of activity is encouraged at the university. We have really diverse series of events, uh, exhibitions, for example, round tables where students and academics sit down and talk about issues. We have a lifelong learning program, which is focused not so much at students, but on adults who wanna keep on, um, maintain their connection with the university and keep on learning even though they've left. Um, we have a number of competitions that go on, like an interpretive competition um, that's run by the university. Uh, many of the students at our university uh, participate in debating societies. Uh, currently, we're the champions in China at this. Um, in terms of additional things, there are a number of projects that, that go on across, across Ningbo, and students have the, have the um, ability to participate in these, these projects which I would strongly encourage them to do because as well as that, if you're learning Chinese and you're participating in these things, it basically improves, the, gives you a better capability here in the language. The Language Center, which I talked about a bit at the beginning, has the following languages, Spanish, Korean, German, French, Japanese, and Mandarin. Mandarin is for international students only. Um, all of the language is, is taught by people from those countries. So you're not learning from you know, somebody who's, you know, like me, Australian, who speaks French, you're learning from, from French speakers and German speakers and Spanish speakers. Um, this is something that is a, a very important thing. The Language Centre makes a huge contribution to, to um, FHSS and the university. In terms of our employability, we have a 92.3% um, employment uh, figure for the, for the faculty. Uh, many of the students, often I get this question, I said, oh, if I do IC or IS, where am I going to end up? And the answer is, well, I've taught um, a number of MBA programs across China, and I often run into our students there in the programs. They're working as executives for companies. Most of them work for uh, large multinational corporations where their English language skills are in demand. Um, what we, what our, all of our degree programs, economics, IC, IS, um, and Eden do is they actually teach students to think critically. That's a really important thing. They're not like a STEM program, which is science and technology and engineering program, for example, where a lot of time gets spent teaching students about, um, about um, their methods, improving their technical ability. Our programs are basically about teaching people how to think and teaching people how to think critically, uh, how to basically um, communicate effectively as well with with people and this is very very important when you're when you're going out and you're looking for work um i wouldn't say that we have any issues at all from our students getting jobs uh, many of them work for leading companies in china and uh, once they go overseas and do a master's degree many students even stay in that country one of my again one of my best students from last year the one that went to lse is now got a job working for ey in london essentially uh superb english that, that girl very creative uh, person and and ideally suited for consultancy. Uh, again, a different kind of student in a Chinese university. I'm not even sure if she would have flourished, but in our university, the kind of work that we do, the kind of teaching that we do here, really um, helped her bloom and and develop in such a way as that she's got this career that she always wanted. In terms of the universities that our graduates go on to, you can see that we have good figures in this. Over 89% of our students from our faculty end up going to a QS World University ranked, you know, top 100 university. 
uh, 59% in the top 50 and 25% in the top 10. In terms of the top 10, we do well getting our students into Oxford and Cambridge, Imperial College London, University of Chicago, University of College London, as we go down to the top 50, Penn, Cornell, Columbia, University of Edinburgh, Johns Hopkins, all of these places we get our students into. And they're not just going into like an English program there, they're going to programs like public health, economics, business programs there. Our students do well. Um, they're excellent and from the perspective of coming in here, what we find is we we give we we add a layer of education on top of them that is unique. And it, from looking at the places that our students go to, they are basically able to go from there and almost start anything. In terms of the kind of careers they go into, you get a good understanding uh, here. Why are we so good in terms of commercial and professional? Well, we're so good in that because this is what this city is, Ningbo. We're a port city and we're a major center of commerce. In fact, since COVID came, we've taken up, um, we're now the, the third largest port in Asia. And in terms of the economy here, things are booming. Uh, many of our students, they come back and they want to stay in their family, they want to stay in the community in Ningbo and they put back into the community after coming back from, from overseas. In terms of the schools and our programs, the School of Economics is my, pro is my school. I'm actually now the head of school um, in that in that in, in the school of the School of Economics. Um, in terms of the undergraduate programs, we have two undergraduate programs: uh, International Economics and Trade, and Economics. I'm often asked about what the difference between the two programs is, and the answer is there's not much difference at all, really. The only exception is International Economics and Trade. You have to do courses in International Economics and Trade. In economics, you have a lot more choices with electives, but everybody in economics always has to do the same sort of core subjects. So you have to do microeconomics, macroeconomics, you have to do econometrics. Um, these are the required courses. And then after that, in our final year, you have to, students in both programs have to do a dissertation. The dissertation is probably one of the most important things we do. Um, and it's probably one of the reasons why our students do very well when they get overseas, because they actually have to write not a small assignment, they have to write a five to 7,000 word research paper. And it's, it can't be a derivative piece of research. It actually has to have some sort of original component to it. Um, I spent a lot of time supervising students this year. I had 20 undergraduate dissertation students. Uh, I've got two master students at the moment I'm supervising and I've got three PhD students. A great deal of my time is is spent supervising and mentoring students and that contact when we when we begin is about a transition it's a transition from going to a book and reading things and regurgitating or explaining what's already there to going and generating something new it's a huge jump in one year and our students do this the postgraduate program that we do is um the master of science it's a master of science and finance and investment um it's a it's a master's program in economics that, it, that was designed originally for people who want to work with central banks. So there's a high there's a high number of finance courses in the program, as well as microeconomics and macroeconomics and also econometrics. Students in this program will all do a dissertation at the end of the year. It's a one year master's program, that one. The undergraduate are four year degree programs. The first year is an English program and then the next three years is a standard sort of undergraduate program. The School of Education in English has uh, three programs in undergraduate. One is um, English Language and Applied Linguistics. The other one, English Language and Literature. The difference is its focus, Applied Linguistics. These people are doing courses on basically the theory of language. Um, there's also people who are doing work on Applied Linguistics there as well. Um, the BA English Language and Literature is l really a course on English Literature. Basically, you, you do... Uh, critiques of books, you do drama and other things like that, a standard, a standard English literature course, a lot of time spent in both of them writing. Um, the BA English with International Business is um, a course in the business, is a degree program that's taught in conjunction with the business school. Students there do courses from the business school as well as English courses. So it's a course in more or less business communication. Postgraduate programs, we have a postgraduate program in Applied Linguistics, uh, postgraduate programs in international higher education, in TESOL, and also in translation. So the international communications program, we have um, two 
um, international communications programs. Both have, uh, as undergraduate, one focused on international students, so you do Chinese, another focusing on, on domestic students. Both programs, you have to take some kind of language component. What the, the degrees tend to focus on is on things like media and culture, communications, technology, um, multimedia. Many of the graduates go on to work for um, companies like Tencent where the, and, um, and Billy Billy. These are um, huge um, multimedia companies in China, essentially. Uh, we have uh, a number of different research centers in the school, and there is a master's program as well. What's the difference between the undergraduate and the postgraduate program in IC? Not that much, really. They do similar courses, cover similar content. It's a little bit more advanced, the master's program, obviously, because it's, for, it's a postgraduate program. The International Studies um, School is probably the most eclectic. Again, there's an option of doing um, the degree with language or without language. Um, students major in either international relations, politics, or history. Um, it's a small but very strong department. There are leaders in um, areas in, in research areas such as international relations. I know the historians in that department really well. There are history. All the historians specialize in some type of Chinese history, usually looking at it from the perspective of the Western interaction with China. Um, the people who are in the school, uh, some of, they all tend to have um, not many, there's not many Chinese uh, in that school. Most of the faculty are from, are, are, well, all the faculty are international um, and they're, they're, they're leaders in their respective fields. In terms of the postgraduate program, there are two postgraduate programs, um, the MA in International Relations and World History and the MA International Relations and International Business. These are these programs are uh, excellent programs. I'd really, if you were thinking about sort of wanting to do a, uh, like a business program that was a little bit softer, I, I would encourage you to consider the MA International Relations and International Business. It's actually a very good program. The undergraduate programs are listed there. In terms of things, the ones that I would like to highlight, of course, economics is very popular, but the one that is most interesting here that you'll see are the BA English Language Lit and Literature and the BA English Language and Applied Linguistics. The two plus two means that you spend two years in China and two years in the UK. Um, you can do a four, a four plus O program. A four plus O, pro a four plus o means basically all, the pro all your studies in China. But um, these programs are different because basically you start your education in China, you do your first two years there, and then progress onto the UK and you finish your studies off there. Um, we, the university has a number of programs like this across the university. There's programs in the business school like this, also programs in um, science and engineering that are like this. But in our, our, our faculty in FHSS, uh, English, the School of English, uh, School of Education in English are the only programs that you can do this in. In terms of the master's programs, to reiterate again, there's a master's in economics. There are four masters in the education English focusing on um, applied linguistics, higher education, translation, interpretation, and also teaching English. Um, there's um, one master's in international communications and two master's in international studies, one looking at international relations and world history and one looking at international relations and international business. So it's a joint program that's taught with a faculty of business. If you're wanting to find out more details about us, you can find it out through the following things. Uh, this is our WeChat account down below. I'm not sure if you have access to WeChat in, in Indonesia, but if you want to find out more about us, just scan the QR code. That's what I would encourage you to do. Be like, you know, if you're wanting to come to China, integrate, be like us. We, everybody's got a WeChat account. Um, if you want to contact me about anything, please do. Um, I encourage you, I'm marketing director, that's my job. Um, I can direct you any way you want. Um, and we can basically start a conversation and, and work out what you want to do with your life um, in terms of further studies. Okay, guys, any questions? Mm. Actually, for the postgraduates, how long the duration of the study, Stuart? That's an important question. For the postgraduate degree, one year. Wow. One okay. year master's program. So one year you can, so it's like you spend five years and you get both bachelor and master's degree at the same time. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and if you wanted to, you could uh, transfer across fields because masters are interesting. Um, many we do have many people specialising. Like for example, in economics, there are many people who come out of um, um, say a finance program or economics program. They've got a bit of a background in it, but many people starting have no background in economics at all. So we in one year we take them through the whole thing. Well, wow, that's very nice. I think that's the most yeah. important question that I have and. You already bring all the presentation was like very informative and very clear. Even like we know all the differences between uh, this major and slightly the you know the name of the major is like slightly different. But you already explained to us that all the majors, so we know everything. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess the most what I'd say is that in to round things up is all the programs are, are of a high quality. I in the time span of being the marketing director. I got to know nearly every faculty member, and I can honestly say that the both undergraduate masters programs are excellent. In terms of the masters programs, um, we spend a lot of time vetting the students, and we go through and even interview them. Um, we make sure that before starting the program, the students can do the work. They're up to the ling English language instruction. This is very important Indeed. for a one-year masters program. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Undergraduate less important because we have that first year of English. Um, it might seem a bit frustrating for people coming from overseas to do this. Um, that you can apply for a waiver from this. Um, it depends um, on on your level of English. But what we found is, um, from our own experience, it's often better to make people do that year and make sure their English is really up to standard. Yeah, yeah. Because the language instructions fall only in English, then you know you need to yeah. master that uh, instruction. It, and it's. It's not conversational English, it's professional yeah. English. Yes. And there's a big difference uh, yeah. on how, on the words you can use in a professional dialogue and the words you can use when you're just having a conversation with somebody. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, Patrick, do you have anything to share? Or? Hey, uh, thank you, Stuart. Uh, I think uh, Professor has explained a lot about our program. And uh, to, to, to the thing, uh, the first year, what student really will study, uh, I would say it's an EAP, uh, English for them purpose. So it's kind of, you know, a bridge to connect students from high school to our uh, very authentic British education. So it's very, very important for students to start, you know, uh, from our foundation and the progress to the professional study in the, in the future. Yeah, I, I couldn't state it highly enough. You, you that first year you need to take it seriously yeah. because it, it's going to give you a platform that will help you throughout the rest of your studies. You do have to write and you have to write well. Um, and because we take you seriously, we're, we're going to judge you as the same way we would judge anybody who's doing, we don't take it, make discounts for you because you're foreign. Um, yeah. This is a British university and we teach in English and we expect you to have the standard that's required. That's the most important. And also, I believe that the uh, UNNC also have the same standard of teaching methodology and also the teaching standard as the uh, the university in the UK, uh, the Nottingham in the UK. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. And all the courses that are there are pretty much the same courses that are there in, in, um, in England or in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, similar content is taught. It's designed that way so that if you went on exchange from us, and you went to the UK to their campus, you just slot into the program. There's yep. no no difference. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, for both of you, for Patrick and uh, Professor Stewart, with this short info session and specialized talking about HFHSS, Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, we now get more better understanding about this faculty and hope that in the future that there will be more international students and also uh, especially from Indonesia will apply at your faculty. Uh, thank you very much for your support for Stuart and Patrick. Thank you, Thanks. Okay. Thank you Stuart. Well, greatest, this is the end of today's info session. And if you like this video, please press the like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you again in our next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.